Yesterday was the International Day Against Drug Abuse and uh, Illicit Trafficking. It's a day set apart for the last three decades, I believe, to focus our attention on how to reduce and resolve um, drug abuse and trafficking in our society. Which brings me to our big hard fact. According to a 2022 research article published in PubMed, Most Nigerians cannot afford drug and alcohol abuse treatment. The name of the article is Direct Medical Cost of Treating Substance Use Disorders in Two Tertiary Hospitals in Southwest Nigeria, a cross-sectional study. I found that article uh, because my guest today is one of the co-authors. She's an addiction professional. She's a clinical pharmacist at the Federal Neuropsychiatry uh, um, Hospital. She's here today to paint us a picture about the negative effects of addiction as well as tell us about the options that are available to help the addicted. Her name is Chinanye Umeche. Welcome to Hard Facts. Hi, Sandra. Thanks so much for having me. Good to have you on the show. Yeah, thank you. Lagos, we're going to be taking your questions about addiction as well. Call me on 0700-993-993-993. That's for men. Women, call me on 01465-7190. Now, um, Chinea, before we go into it, before mm-hmm. we talk about um, the cost of addiction treatment, let's talk about addiction itself. In your clinical experience, is um, drug addiction on the rise in Nigeria or on the decline? Hmm. Okay, so um, again, thank you for having me. Um, I believe that drug addiction is on the rise. However, um, access to treatment is a problem. Okay. And so we see a lot of people actually trying to come in for treatment at the facility where I work. I see. But because we don't have um, the capacity to take all of them, Hmm. we always have a backlog of patients who want to come in for treatment. I see. So yes, um, the incidence or the numbers of um, addiction cases Mm -hmm. are increasing Mm -hmm. on a daily, especially because of the crisis that we have in Nigeria, where the economy is literally almost brutal. And most people are not able to fend for themselves or provide for themselves. So they just resort to ways of escaping reality. Hmm. And of course, that plunges them into addiction. Hmm. Yeah. What changes are we seeing in drug use in, in terms of which drugs are becoming more common? Hmm. Oh, so, um, so because with addiction, you get people who are cashing out on it. So they are willing to experiment because they know that Addiction is something that you would always come back to. And so there's a market. Hmm. So they're always experimenting and creating new psychoactive substances. Hmm. And people are going to look for cheaper alternatives of getting high. Hmm. Um, people, are, Young people are willing to experiment on literally anything. Hmm. Um, I would not be focusing on the names of these substances, but... I bet you there are lots of concoctions going on. There are lots of mixtures. People are doing all sorts of things Mm -hmm. to get high. Mm -hmm. Um, And of course, sometimes, depending on how rich they are, Mm -hmm. they are willing to go a step higher and they spend a whole lot of money. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they they get these substances. Mm -hmm. So the experimentation is there because the individuals themselves are hooked. They can't be satisfied because with tolerance, um, they want to get pleasure over and over Mm. and then the guys who are um, trafficking and and selling this stuff Mm -hmm. are willing to get deeper into their pockets Mm -hmm. so they're willing to go the whole mile when we say um drug addiction most people uh know exactly what we mean um it means getting hooked on a drug Mm -hmm. right uh no longer having the power to stop yourself from using that drug and that includes alcohol because people forget that alcohol is also a drug (laughs) yes it is (laughs) is. Um, but a lot of people also seem to think that it cannot happen to them um they think uh it's a question of willpower or you know get mind you know feed control yourself you know or something like that so what i want is for you to explain to lagos how does addiction work at physical level why do people get hooked? Okay, um, so Lagos, if you're listening to me, anybody, anybody can get hooked on a psychoactive substance. Uh, easy, 
if I express him, might want to experiment. He has friends who are taking and he's like, come, why are you guys always like this? And then he just goes in to you, right? And that's experimentation. For young people, they are more prone to using because of peer pressure. So um, the friends are like, ah, you're not a man. Or that, ah, ah, what's wrong with you? We're all doing it. So, you know, why why don't you want to? And so they, they get hooked due to peer pressure. Okay. Um, you also have some people who take just to feel better. Okay. So perhaps you have a person who has a condition okay. and begins to self-medicate. Hmm. So for instance, a person who is depressed mm -hmm. might want to use a psychoactive substance to help him feel high mm -hmm. or stimulated mm -hmm. or happier. Mm -hmm. So they take these happy pills, mm -hmm. not knowing that they can get hooked. Mm -hmm. um, you also have people who use because they want to do better, perform mm -hmm. better. So you've got professionals who are um, who work really hard and need to meet targets. Mm -hmm. And so they take, you know, some of these psychoactive substances to make them awake, to make them perform better, mm -hmm. or in their words, think better. Okay. So these are basically some of the reasons why you have some people getting high. But if you want to talk about the science behind addiction, that's yes. a different thing now. So mm -hmm. so these drugs that we're referring to are called psychoactive. It means that they work on the brain, okay. parts of the brain. Okay. Um, particularly parts of the brain that is able to make you happy. Okay. And they also work on the reward system. So um, what they do is, let's say, for instance, you take a pill hmm. that is psychoactive in nature. Mm -hmm. And then when it gets to the part of your brain that um, releases certain neurotransmitters, that's chemicals that makes you really happy, mm -hmm. it, it's able to release dopamine that's um, the neurotransmitter responsible for you feeling, you know, really good. Mm. Um, the feel-good hormone, right? And the so happy hormone. The happy one. <laughs> and so the person really gets happy, right? right. And he takes one. Um, this pill, of course, look, so um, such certain people have compared the high you get from psychoactive substances to, I'm not sure if I can use the word, the, the feeling you get when you have intimacy. When you have sex. Yes, good. Okay. Right. So I'm not sure. I wanted to be <laughs> sure. <laughs> so certain people have compared this happiness okay. and they say that it is 10 times higher than orgasm, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Now, so um, a person who experiences such levels of pleasure, what mm -hmm. do you think he would want to do tomorrow? Right. He would go back. Especially if that particular pill provides that sort of pleasure. Of course, certain people might take certain um, drugs and they don't get that response. Right. And so they keep using until they find the one right. that makes them really happy. So, of right. course, they go back to using. And so what happens is that the drug becomes, let me use the word, the brain becomes used to it. Mm. So you'll find that when they take one pill today, it provides them pleasure um, equivalent to A. Mm -hmm. um, tomorrow, one pill will not provide that same pleasure. They would increase. So you keep chasing that very first you high. keep chasing that high. Mm. And then depending on the um, mode of use, mm -hmm. if it's injected, the high comes faster than if it's orally. Mm. And so you find that people who um, inject psychoactive drugs mm -hmm. get more addicted faster. Okay. Than if they're taking orally. Okay. Um, Do we have people who are injected in Nigeria? Oh, yes, absolutely. I mean, you talk about things like heroin. Oh. No, yeah, yeah. But, okay. you know, so you talk about some of these um, opioids mm -hmm. that um, um, are injected, mm -hmm. of course. And then you also have certain groups we of people. We have these opioids in Nigeria? Oh, sure, because they are um, of medical importance. So okay. you have people who um, are sickle cell um, patients okay. and require this um, opioid okay. to for their pain management. Okay. And unfortunately, they also form a large chunk of people who become addicted hmm. to it. So people who already have a genuine medical condition that they yes. need to treat with these opioids yes. can also become addicted yes. to the opioids. Yes. Ah. Yes. And so you see, there's the uh, uh, the doctor has to, um, you know, find that balance, making sure that. You don't give um, this injection to the extent to which the person becomes addicted. And it should be controlled, mm. to be quite honest with you. It has to be controlled. But mm. unfortunately... Mm. That's not happening a lot. Yeah. If you just tuned in, hello to you. Uh, good evening. You're listening to Hard Facts on 99.3 Nigeria Info. I have in the studio with me Chinenye Umeche. She is uh, a clinical pharmacist. She's also an addiction professional. And she's talking to us today about Nigeria's addiction problem. Would you say that Nigeria has a drug addiction problem? Absolutely. There How was, severe is it? Okay, so um, there was a very comprehensive survey that was done in 2018. Right. Um, and that report 
revealed that about 14.4 million Nigerians had used drugs in the past year. And then I think about, um, what, 3 million are suffering from a drug use disorder. That's a, that's a lot. What's a drug use disorder? A drug use disorder is the same as addiction. Okay. So, I mean, when you say a drug use disorder, that's just a clinical term. For addiction. Yes. So before a doctor can say a person has a drug use disorder, he has mm-hmm. to meet certain criteria. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and so one of which is tolerance. Mm-hmm. That means the person has to keep using as at increasing amounts mm-hmm. just to you know get the same pleasure as mm-hmm. before. Mm-hmm. So, yes, you, you have at least um, three million Nigerians Mm -hmm. suffering from addiction or drug use disorder Mm. and one in four of these is a woman one in four is a woman which brings me to my next question are there particular demographics who are more prone to addiction than others Mm. okay so um well this report actually showed that these numbers were between people aged 15 to 64 uh, but you have a whole lot of them being the young, young ones. Okay, so on the younger end of that spectrum. On the younger end of that spectrum. Mm-hmm. And then you have the females abusing some of the oral opioids that mm-hmm. we talked about. Okay. So you have more women abusing the oral opioids. Mm-hmm. And then the um, the males, the young guys, mm-hmm. the young boys are using more of these popular ones that are smoked, mm-hmm. you know, cannabis. Mm-hmm. Yes. I see. Okay. So um, so, so you have uh, one in four uh, of the drug abusers being women. Yes. But that means three of them are men. Yes. Why do we have more men abusing drugs? Hmm. Well, I'm, I'm not sure um, um, a, a work has been done on that. But I, I, I dare say that perhaps it's due to peer pressure. Um, you have a whole lot um young men who are trying to experiment and you know everybody's and then you, you know there's a there's this pressure on young men to meet you know certain social or societal standards okay and they want to um hammer they want to hit yeah and of course in doing so they are trying to go into um um cyber crime and of course we have a lot of clients who are into cybercrime using drugs. Okay. Because some of these drugs are stimulants okay. and they keep them awake. Okay. Um you also have them using because of peer pressure. Mm-hmm. Um what else? And of course the the common one, alcohol. Mm-hmm. We have a whole lot of people who are abusing alcohol. Mm-hmm. And they seem to be young people, probably because of the societal pressure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Whew. Okay, now we just came out of rolling lockdowns due to COVID-19. Um, the lockdowns, of course, led to higher unemployment, uh, increased isolation. Uh, we saw a rise in unwelcome behavior like domestic violence, for instance. Was there also an uptick in drug and alcohol abuse? I, I, I would say so. I would say yes. However, again, because of the lockdown, we also had a lot of our clients who were unable to access treatment. Okay. Um, but I, I would, I mean, the, the research shows that once there is a crisis anywhere or there is a health um, issue, um, challenge around, people tend to use more. Okay. Um, I mean, just a person who is um, anxious about his tomorrow okay. would want to feel better. Okay. So they use. Okay. So, the, I mean, research... Data speaks to that and says when there is this uncertainty yeah. about an economic downturn, yes. war, yes, or a you crisis. know, just high stress um, situations. Yes, yes, people use. Yes, I mean, just the mere thought that let's say a client who is supposed to come to the facility to access care mm. knows that oh, there is a lockdown and I can't go to the hospital tomorrow, mm. it becomes fidgety or anxious. Mm. I just I want to just calm, calm my down. Nerves. Right, they just take right. Yeah. Why does it matter? Um, that people are addicted, you know? <laughs> Why have we as a society decided, okay, this thing is a problem and we should tackle it, you know? Let me put it differently. Are there negative outcomes? What are the negative outcomes for the individual and for the society of high drug addiction levels? Okay, so there are consequences to drug use. Um, I'll first speak on the medical consequences. Okay. I mean, because... Literally, a person who is using a psychoactive substance is causing a lot of damage to his brain. Okay. Let me just say also that young people who use drugs are also, uh, um, what was the word now? They are, uh, they are 
causing a lot of harm to their brain because okay. a young person's brain, the frontal, the prefrontal cortex. When you say young, what do you mean? What oh, age are you talking okay. about now? Um, that's below um twenty five. Okay. Okay. So a, your your prefrontal cortex doesn't fully mature or grow fully until you're twenty five. Okay. So imagine a young person who is using psychoactive substances fiddling with that part of the brain mm -hmm. and that part of the brain is responsible for your ability to make sound judgments, mm. make good decisions, um, you know, being able to function really. Okay. It's it's like the admin. Ah, okay. So a young person who is fiddling with drugs at that age mm -hmm. scrambles that the signal. That signal. Right. And so when he's twenty five, he's not able to make good decisions. Right. So I mean that's one. Um, you also have people who can have cancer due to drug use. Okay. Um, people who use a certain type of stimulants can have um, uh, tooth decay, okay. heart, heart, heart cancers, okay. lung cancers, um, eye problems, hypertension, hmm. all sorts really. So there, uh, there's a myriad, there's a lot of medical consequences to drug use. Hmm. And of course you talk about the economic impact. I mean, a person who is using, he is not concerned about um, his his tomorrow. Right. All he wants to do is use and then all his responsibilities, whether it's as a father, as a son, as a wife, as a, as a daughter, hmm. he uses all of his money just to purchase. To get high. And of course, if it's a person who is a, um, a, uh, a career person, mm -hmm. he's not able to go to work, mm -hmm. he loses his job, mm -hmm. and of course, he loses his source of income, right? right? So that's on one hand. Right. And then drug use goes hand in hand with violence. Okay. A lot of the crime that we see, the weird and absurd crimes mm -hmm. that we see, mm -hmm. are committed under the influence of a psychoactive substance. I see. Yes. I see. So we should be worried. Okay. Well, Lagos, let's talk, shall we? 0700-993-993-993. Uh, we would love to take your questions about addiction. We would love to take your questions about uh, Nigeria's drug problem. I, I guess I can say Nigeria's drug problem because she has said that Nigeria does have a, drugs, a drug problem. Uh, women, call us on 01465-7190. We've got WhatsApp. WhatsApp is 080. 959 We're streaming live on Facebook. <laughs> Facebook is Nigeria Info 99.3. YouTube, Nigeria Info FM. I'd love to take your comments off of um, social media as well. Uh, Kingsley Chibi came on Facebook says, people never afford three square meal on a daily, not to talk of drug abuse treatment. The average Nigerian is living and surviving by the will to live. I don't know what that means, but thank you very much for sending your message in. Hello, thanks for calling us. Yeah. Hello? <coughs> Hello? <coughs> oh, that's unfortunate. The network isn't very good. We've got a message here from Abe. Abe says, Sandra, our drug addiction is very severe. People now use uh, soft drinks to drink these drugs in disguise. People drink... Um, gas what uh, children of less than 12 drink these uh, sachet alcoholic drinks like water mm. some parents even buy for their children youth are the major culprits addictions uh, persist as a result of trying to feel relief from uh, one f or the depression challenge at internet. thank you very much for your message Abe. sorry about that Call back if you can 99.3 hello hello good afternoon what's your name sir Good to have you on the show. What's your name? My name is Bayo. Bayo, you're sounding very far away. Yeah, sorry. Can you hear me now? Yes. Uh, yeah, but I, I just want to. Um, I just want to ask your guest. Yeah. Uh, what are the measures? Of course, it is established, unarguably, a uh, factual that we are the fudge of this um, um, drug addiction manner, right? But uh, my question is that um, what are the measures, you know, remedial measures being put in place probably maybe by their organizations or a kind of psychological training, you know, or sensitization given to this uh, to the people involved because it's a societal problem. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, did you get that question? Um, if um, if I heard him correctly, he's asking what are the measures my facility is doing or mm. where I work, rather. Yeah, to sensitize um, people, I guess. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so there's a whole lot we're doing um, at the Federal Neuropsychiatric Hospital, Yaba. Mm -hmm. um, one of one of those things that we do is try to, we, we do a lot of sensitization. We, we speak a lot about substance use. 
um, we have a lot of um, staff who do this, not just privately, but as a hospital. Mm. The hospital, in fact, has a an online um, show that we do. It's called Yaba Voice, where we talk about not just drug use, but of course mental health um, as as a whole. Mm. So we do a lot of that, and of course we also we were trying so much. Th- the the medical director is doing a lot to make sure that the facility is well upgraded. Um, we're building newer facilities, newer infrastructure. We're putting new things into our treatment centers. Mm. And of course, we also have some of our interns um, at the pharmacy department who do a lot of work in sensitizing young people just like them Mm. about drug use. Some of those interns are here today, by the way. They're in the studio with me, but they're just observing their madam work. (laughs) (laughs) But go ahead. (laughs) Sorry to cut you. So so these interns every year, they they carry out um, activities geared towards sensitizing the population um, and of course because it's coming from them they're talking to their mates they are they, they are they are more received so to speak but yeah but the federal new psychiatric hospital does a lot we also go to radio stations um i'm not sure if i can there's a particular radio station that the hospital you know visits i think once a month or once in two weeks okay and so we we discuss about um addiction in general and of course how to access care mm. at the facility all right well we've got messages here on whatsapp um yeah, this one just says hi sandra you didn't leave a message though but uh dr bimbo kane de ikeru says uh sandra can i get a link to this program i need the contacts of the doctor uh my wife is addicted oh. to benzodiazepine oh. and pentazosin um all her thighs are infected she has huge venous drainage comprising in the lower limbs okay so um would you mind if i share your number with this person um that that would be fine um however of course he'll still have to come Come to the the facility yeah yeah he'll still have to come and but if he needs information as to what he needs to do before he comes that's fine sure all right okay 99.3 hello Oh, that's unfortunate. Okay. Well, we have a break coming up and uh, we have to take it. Uh, But when we come back from this break, I will take, um, you know, your messages. I'll take your thoughts. Somebody's asking the side effect of drugs for sex performance. Is that a drug that people get addicted to? Um, No, unfortunately, they are not. Except because there are some people who actually um, perform better when they use these psychoactive substances because they are stimulating in nature. Right. But if you're talking about the orthodox medications used to enhance performance, mm-hmm. that, I don't know. That shouldn't he, he, I don't know. He just. I mean, um, I, just, I literally things. read what he literally <laughs> wrote. I do not know. I am not a doctor or a pharmacist. <laughs> there are some medications used to treat. Um, um, what's it called? Erectile dysfunction. Yes, different, erectile stuff like dysfunction. That. Right. Yes, that's that's different. Those are not addictive. Okay. But they are, of course, a person who takes alcohol tells you he's 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 better in bed, right? Okay. That is addictive because okay. alcohol by nature is psychoactive. Okay. All right then. Lagos, we'll take your thoughts uh, when we come back from this break. I have on the show with me today uh, someone who is a clinical ph- uh, pharmacist and addiction professional uh, at the Federal Neuropsychiatric Hospital here in Lagos. Uh, Chinenge Umeche um, has been talking to us about addiction in Nigeria. We're having this conversation because um, like I said, yesterday was the International Day Against Drug Abuse and Illicit Trafficking. It's a day that has been set apart for the last three decades to focus our attention on how to reduce and resolve drug abuse, addiction and trafficking in our society. I'm Sandra Ezekwesili. S. Ezekwesili. Don't go away because when we come back, she will be talking to us about uh, what the signs that relatives uh, should look out for uh, are, you know, to help help them know that a relative they care about is addicted to drugs. Nigeria Info will be right back. Many people are in business, but not everyone means business. The people who mean business never say no to money, cash, card, or transfer. These ones grab business opportunities with their full chest. (laughs) Keep an eye on things that matter like people, cash flow, and how it all adds up.
visit www.numba.com that is n o m b a numba.com to get started get more out of mac get an amazing battery life with the powerful m1 pro or the even more powerful m1 max with compiling code sophisticated designs and high volume data analysis with an immersive 16 inch liquid retina xdr display and an array of ports teams can get more work done from anywhere with macbook pro get 24 months warranty when you shop at apple authorized reseller i connect and i devices cash back all your angel stores now you can buy authentic apple devices easy Please don't disconnect your line. Sick or say you not link your national identification number to your MTN number. Make you not worry. If you don't already collect your NIN, get some five easy steps. It will take to reconnect her. One, dial star 785 hash. Two, text your national identification number NIN to 785. Three, this is my MTN NGR. Four, start with digit on top this WhatsApp number. Plus 234-903-300-0001. Or five, visit www.mtn.ng. If you not get national identification number, just walk a tiny MTN store or NIMC center will near you. Or visit the MTN website to book appointment. Make you do any of these things sharp sharp oh. opportunity fee day now. Oh. <laughs> if you ask yourself, now what thing you they do today? love is unconditional nothing serves this love better than a bowl of indomie so show some love with indomie interest per annum with fair pay from Fair Money Microfinance Bank. Guys, if I pay to all these plenty FM and data, where they say flex, now dash me, dash me, you go be me. <laughs> you dash you get. So this guy got me. I got it. Hey, girl, now, as I buy my grocery like this, I just collect 1,000 now. Welcome bonus. Sarah. I can always charge. Bam, go, nothing, 10 times airtime bonus. I also enjoy double data. Joy. Wait, oh, you mean 1,000 naira welcome bonus? Yes. Plus 10 times airtime bonus. Yes. Plus double data again? Yes. But, but, but where's the universe now? <laughs> the globe is the universe now. You know I try. Oh, 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 no. No wonder boys get flexed in the house on top phone 247 non-stop. Hey, I thought come. My people, don't let grass grow under your leg. Go get your globe in today. Dial star 777 hash to buy and enjoy 10 times airtime bonus plus up to double data. Also, get the free 20,000 naira bonus when you link your NIN to your Glow line. Offer day for both new and existing subscribers there. Glow. Unlock it. Relax, recharge, and take a break this summer. Find the best summer holiday deals to Dubai, London, Cairo, Florida, and many other amazing cities on Wakanao.com. We got you covered. Book now on Wakanao.com or visit any of our travel centers near you. Take a break. Pick a city. Wakanao. 
Let's go. Hey, Afana. <laughs> it doesn't be like this. Everything is going well until the unexpected happens. Then, hey, he does boast you again. Hit me. Oh, you hit me. If you get our Flexi Comprehensive Motor Insurance Plan, you can save yourself the ah, yay, and the painful cost of repairing the damage to your vehicle. For as low as 15,000 Naira a year, if someone bashes your car, we pay to get it fixed. Visit www.hezinsurance.com or call 0700-434-7764 to get the Hez Flexi Motor Plan. Hez Insurance, your simple, smart protection. There is something that women get when they become men. She knows when her family is in pain, and she knows better than to allow lead moment to live. The fast-acting and effective MRV paracetamol tablet, the lead one, has pleasant tasting pineapple flavor syrup for children. She sends aches and pains far away from her family. Now does he know there's no end game for its over 70 years of quality experience. Leave aches and pain for your car with M&V paracetamol. If symptoms persist after two days, please consult your doctor. M&V paracetamol, pain not stopping. Race in the Papa Birds. It is a right and a responsibility. It is the route we have to make our voices heard. Racing unites our voices. It unifies our planet. With your PVC, with my PVC, we can all tell the story of what should be, not what should have been. Don't be left out. Get your PVC today. Remember, your vote is your voice. This message is brought to you by Y Monitor and Protective Service. to your number one station for talk. Your number one station for talk. 99.3 Nigeria Info. Let's talk. Hello, Lagos. Good evening. I'm Sandra Ezekwesili. I have on the show with me a clinical pharmacist and addiction professional uh, from the Federal uh, Neuropsychiatry Hospital, Chinenge Umeche. And she's talking to me about addiction in Nigeria. How severe is Nigeria's drug addiction problem? She says pretty severe. She says um, the demography is between 18 to 64. Uh, uh, is it 54 or 64? 15 to oh, 64. Oh, 15. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I was being generous. So 15 to 64, uh, you have, uh, for every four people you meet, three of the men uh, in that group. Using, um, already having drug use disorder or addiction. And one of the women in that group is also um, uh, using uh, drugs. And, uh, you know, she talks about, well, anybody can get addicted to drugs. Anybody can, uh, you know, um, start to abuse drugs. Um, she says uh, women uh, abuse opioids more and men abuse, well, everything else on, yes. the, on the spectrum. Now, before the break, I mentioned that I was going to ask you um, how people can spread pot that someone they care about is abusing drugs because a lot of the time friends and relatives of, of someone who becomes addicted to drugs um, say that they didn't realize that there was a problem until very very late in the day so what are the signs that we should be on the lookout for you know for people we care about okay so um, again I'd like to say that literally anybody can get addicted all it takes is just one use and you're hooked, especially mm. if it's um if it provides if if it provides pleasure mm. for the person. Um, I mean, anybody, a pharmacist, a doctor, uh, who a banker, anybody can get addicted. Mm. But what are the signs that you should look out for if you suspect someone is um, hooked on drugs? Mm -hmm. So one of those things is when the person begins to neglect their major roles. Mm -hmm. Um, they're no longer able to um meet up with the demands or you find that this person has social problems, he's not interacting well with people, he's, um, you know, always trying to avoid people, and then he's always, you know, no, no longer doing the things that he used to do, which was pleasurable. Mm. Because what the drugs do is that they give you a heightened sense of pleasure so that you no longer pay attention to those things which you used to enjoy doing because they no longer provide as much pleasure. Remember the comparison between pleasure from addiction mm -hmm. to orgasm? Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. So if, for instance, I like to eat goat meat mm. and I begin to use drugs, mm -hmm. I would no longer get 
that sort of pleasure, the, the pleasure, pleasure from, from the goat, goat meat, meat would mm. be diminished because I, I have seen a higher pleasure. Right. And so you see people who are no longer able to do those things they found pleasurable before. And um, of course, you also have people who would use this substance even in the face of the consequences the, right. that it, it, it provides, mm -hmm. it, 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 it gives them. So a person who, you would see a person who has, um, let's say, lung cancer from smoking and he would... I mean, he knows that this is from smoking, mm -hmm. but he would still use. And so we call that hazardous use, mm -hmm. right? Um, you also have people who spend more time on using. And also, if you see um, uh, some some young men who mm, what smoke cannabis, for instance, right. you see they have bloodshot eyes, right? I mean, their eyes are red. Right. Always red. Right. And you're asking, what's wrong with your eyes? Oh, it's dust. Oh, no, it's dust. Or somebody put hand in my eye. Right. There's always one story. And people who use always lie. They always cook up one story or the other. Hmm. So you're asking him, what of the money I gave you last week? It should be enough. Oh, uh, a boss hit me on the leg. And then the money disappeared. And then something, something. You also have people who experience withdrawal when they are not using. So withdrawal is one of those things that the drug uses to confuse people who use. So when a person is using and then he attempts to stop, he would experience what we call withdrawal symptoms that would that can sometimes be very painful. Symptoms such as, um, let's say, sneezing or um, teary eyes or um, shakiness or aggression or inability to control their mood. And the only time those symptoms would resolve is if they just use. Mm. So it's a cycle, it's a vicious cycle. Mm. You don't use, problem. You use, it's a problem. So mm. addiction is a vicious cycle that never ends, really. I see. I yes. see. Um, so it's one thing to know what to look out for. The red eyes, the non-enjoyment of things they used to enjoy before, etc., etc. And want aggression. And want, and want to help. Um, it's another thing to know what to do. So if I believe that someone close to me is addicted to drugs, what should I do um, um, to help them? How do I intervene successfully? Successfully being the important uh, part of this question. Mm. Okay, so before I speak on what to do, can I speak on what not to do? Sure, yes, yes. So <laughs> don't stigmatize, okay. don't shame Um Confrontation doesn't really work, okay. except if it is done in a controlled and under professional guidance, okay. So, um, which we usually do sometimes in the hospital. Mm -hmm. um, well, not direct confrontation, but mm -hmm. just to clarify stuff. And then one thing that I must emphasize not to do is it's not a spiritual problem. Hmm. So taking to church and doing deliverance, I'm a Christian, but I don't think... It doesn't work. There is no. It's not evidence backed. Right. It's not um, evidence. There's no evidence supporting that. Right. So one thing that you can do to help is to seek professional help. Right. By going to a facility that provides treatment for addiction. So not a church. Not a church. Not a mosque. Not a mosque. Not, not a, a prayer center. Not a uh, babalawo's uh, house. Not the babich. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Well, yeah, you get the point. Yeah. So, um, it take the person to a hospital mm -hmm. that offers treatment for addiction, right. like the psychiatric hospital. You also have facilities, hospitals that have uh, psychiatric departments, like Luth, and a couple of other facilities. Mm -hmm. Um. So, but yeah, or a rehab. So you have um, private rehabs or rehabs that are funded by NGOs. Or even I know that there are a couple of um, rehabs that have gone through um, um, faith-based rehabs that um, have gone through training um, with the hospital where I work. Mm. So they know their they know the extent to which they can provide help, and mm. some of them actually bring psychiatrists and addiction professionals to help. Mm. Okay, mm -hmm. yes. So so you have facilities such as those to take them. It's not by locking them up or chaining them to a tree, a tree or beating or them up. Because I saw a video of s somewhere in the southeast of a young man who was using one of these stimulants. Mm -hmm. And then they chained him to a tree and were, they were beating him who, and wow. telling him, oh, you must say you, you're you going to stop using. You must say, I swear that you will stop using. Of course, what do you want him to say? He, he will kept, say, yeah. But trust me, I know. 
he will probably get out of there and go and use to the calm down. The minute you release him, mm -hmm. he will go and use. Mm. He would go and use. Lagos, join the conversation. 0700-993-993-993-01465. 7190. What questions do you have about addiction? What questions do you have about helping uh, people you care about overcome addic addiction? Which brings me to my next question for you. Uh, Chine, talk to us about treatment. Now, you've talked about your facility quite a bit. What are the therapies available? What are the treatments currently in use in Nigeria to help people get off drugs? Mm. So addiction, unfortunately, is a behavioral disorder. Okay. Um, and that simply means that there is no pill that you can use to stop addiction. Okay. Um, so because it's a behavioral disorder, a lot of what we do at the hospital are behavioral therapies. Right. And it means that we engage the psychologists to constantly provide um, group sessions, group therapy for our patients. We also do a lot of what we call CBT, that's mm. cognitive behavioral therapy. Okay. We also do a lot of occupational therapy because most of these people um, who use drugs have literally lost their ability to work okay. or engage in meaningful work. Okay. We teach them newer ways or better ways to engage themselves okay. to avoid boredom which is a major reason for them to use we also teach them how to spend their time better how to manage money so it's a lot of behavioral work that mm -hmm. goes into it we also mm -hmm. have lots of social workers who do good work because they have to go to their environment where they're coming from mm -hmm. assess the location mm -hmm. see if it's fit for them to go back there mm -hmm. when they are discharged from the hospital mm -hmm. so basically what we do is talk therapy mm. really mm. and it's constant and because addiction is a chronic condition that mm. means it's a long lasting thing mm -hmm. it doesn't go away tomorrow mm -hmm. a person who is addicted is always in recovery right you can never literally even if you've been in recovery for 15 years mm -hmm. you can't say you are healed mm. because, because all it takes is one thing all it takes is just one, one trigger. trigger yeah one trigger and you and you either lapse or you relapse. So relapse is just a one-time use. Okay. A relapse is a full-blown um, regression. Regression. Hmm. Lagos, let's talk. 0700-993-993-993. Hello. Good afternoon. Thanks for calling us. Hello. Hello. Thank you Hello for afternoon. calling. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. This is Abbey, who you know on the line. Welcome, Abbey. Yes. Actually, I really find that uh, topic very interesting and your guests have really especially better on it. Okay. But my own contribution is that, you see, this thing is, is why this thing is rampage is because it's accessible to any of these people who have find themselves in this thing. Okay. Because it's everywhere, they can easily get it. And these are where governments should have looked into because you will find some people by the roadside who sell all kind of drugs, who doesn't study pharmacies, you find them by the roadside, sell different kind of drugs around, and these people can easily get access to it. And these are where government should have looked into and clamped down on these kind of people. And everybody is, needs to be creating more awareness, just as we are, we are doing now, to let them know the danger of these drugs, addiction. Because I myself, in my own way, I actually do some uh, small cartoons on as much as I can, at least to pass a message on them. To That's people nice. how they can really understand mm. uh, what addiction is all about, mm. which I tag the rise of society monsters. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. So all these things are part of what we should do, at least to let this thing out of the society, at least okay. reduce it. All so, right. Thank you very much for calling. We appreciate it. 99.3, hello. And well done. Thank you for what you're doing. Hello. Thanks for calling uh, us. Hello. Hello. Sorry about that. Call back if you can. 99.3, hello. All right, give us a call back when you can. Uh, most, uh, someone from Aja is asking me about a drug that he uses with his wife. Um, he's having to use that drug a lot now because um, he has problems with his wife. Uh, and he's asking about the side effects of this drug. Um, I think you should have a conversation with your medical doctor if you're worried about side effects of the or drug. Pharmacist. Um, or pharmacist, if you're wor if worried about the side effects of the drug. You can also re read the leaflet um, that the drug comes with. Uh, the side effects are often re written 
on the leaflet and if you know and then speak with your doctor because nobody no, no medical professional i bring on air is going to have a conversation with you about mm -hmm. any medication you're taking or any condition that you might have they're not going to do that with you it's against their ethics 99.3 hello hello sandra please please sandra please don't cut me up i have been trying to reach you this line i have a case of someone i want to take to uh, uh arrow tomorrow so i've been trying i've been, uh, I've been I, I don't know he is on the substance in fact he is a, he is my sister's son so i don't know if it's possible to take him there giving him drug uh something that can make him sleep so we can take him there he, he's just gonna make me tune into this program i don't know if you can ask uh the, your guest i don't know the kind of drug so that he can sleep because it's somewhat violent uh, violent so he because he the, 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 yesterday we got the news that he was dancing uh, at um, dancing somewhere the way where he took the drug and they were playing uh, uh, they were drumming for him and he was dancing so it has really got out, gotten out of hand. I don't know how if it's possible to get something to uh, to get him uh, if he can to make him sleep through the journey so we can take him to Abuquita the neuropsychiatric hospital Abuquita. Okay. Thank you for calling. Keep listening. I'm sure the doctor will, the pharmacist, sorry, I keep calling her doctor, sorry. The pharmacist. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think should happen here? Okay, so what your caller is asking is names of medications to sedate this patient. Yes. Which I cannot tell you um, on, on air. air. So right. I'd rather that you, I mean, you, 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 you have to be creative in getting him to the to facility sleep, right. as long as... Um, He's your relative. I mean, I don't want you doing anything illegal to someone who is not related to you. Right. But you need to take him to a facility. You need to find a way to take him to a facility. Right. I mean, I don't want to come on air and begin to tell you all the tactics that many relatives have done. Because, mm. be, look, let's be honest. I mean, it's not this condition is not malaria. Right. Malaria, you know, oh, I've got a headache. Mm -hmm. I, I, I have a fever. Mm -hmm. I literally know that I'm ill. Mm -hmm. But these guys... Their reality tells them that they're fine. Mm -hmm. And did I tell you that some of these drugs can actually cause psychosis? What do you mean? Okay, so um, you have some of these medications, these psychoactive substances that mm -hmm. work on certain parts of the brain mm -hmm. that make you begin to hear voices of people okay. that are not there. Okay. Um, you also have some of these drugs that would make you begin to act aggressively okay. and violently okay. or even begin to have delusions. I mean, I, I remember a client who... Um, started smoking cannabis mm -hmm. and he started telling people that he was the husband of the Queen of England okay. and that he was he's he's a very influential so it gives person. you so it gives you like a personality that you didn't have uh, not a personality it makes you have what we call grandiose delusions this Im Im imagination or feeling that you are bigger than what you have oh. or that you have a lot of money in your bank account mm -hmm. that's a symptom of psychosis I see okay uh, let's come back to this one. Someone says, I want to divert a little. We have some addicts uh, in the area of sexual stimulants because uh, it does much of the high feelings. How harmful can this be? I, uh, this person's talking about being addicted to inhaling fuel. Mm. They had to stop at some point. Uh, uh, this person is also saying that they realize that boredom also contributes to addiction. There wasn't a question there, really. Uh, you know, so that's the second person asking me about sexual stimulants. Again, speak to your doctor. Uh, Peter Yorinde from Anthony says, Madam Sandra, this interview uh, hasn't given us much in terms of correction and if there are facilities that are free to bring people in to detoxify and rehabilitate. I belong to a Catholic charity society where we reach out a lot to people who have different issues. Uh, we found that one in five homes has a child draining their resources to keep up addiction. So empowering the family is an issue. We've taken some to the hospital and the least fee to admit is 150k. Uh, there's faith base that she talked about and the most common is the one with branches um, in Ekpe and Ikeja. Monthly fee for a patient is around 50k. Some don't leave the facility because their structure is not secure to cut off drug supply as their low rank staff supply the patients and admin turn a blind eye since the patients remain a money machine. Where mm. is a government free treatment center, please? Wow, a lot packed into that message there. Mm. Mm. Okay, so he says that um, he needs information about facilities that are free. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think there is a particular facility, I think it's, it's a faith-based. If 
I can mention the name. I think sure. House of Refuge okay. or something. If I'm not mistaken, okay. I may be mixing it up. Okay. But there's a free, I know that it's free, but they have only two intakes per year. Oh. So they take twice a year. Yeah. And once you are, you don't, you're not taking that time. They mm. can't, you can't come in until the next batch. It's done. Um, because it's, it's free. Mm-hmm. And I think there's this other um, man who is a, a pastor. who he picked up one young lady at one point. Right. Uh, his name keeps mm, running away from my head. I think his facility is also free. Okay. I think this is Tony or something. I can't remember. Okay. Rappel. Tony Rappel? I think I, I think so. I'm okay. not sure if he's free. Okay. But yes, even though that um my hospital is a government hospital, mm-hmm. I believe that we are so far okay. the cheapest. Okay. And even at being the cheapest, mm-hmm. it is still very expensive for a lot of for people. For a lot of people. Unfortunately. Um, w- I, I, I hate that we're out of time. I, I honestly wish we could keep six already. It is, I oh know. <laughs> <laughs> I, and Lagos is calling. Lagos has a lot of questions. So I, I, I'm thinking we need to come back and, and talk about, you know, addiction. We, we need to have this conversation again. That'd be nice. So, so what will happen is, um, you know, when we're done here, we'll, we'll, we'll plan it. Mm. And then I'll have you come back. And all we're going to do is take questions from the public. That's and funny. we'll try to answer as, as honestly as we can. But you have to remember Lagos, she can't give you prescriptions on air. Can't. She can't, um, you know, tell you what to do with your loved one, you know, except, of course, to take them to a medical facility where they will get the help that they need. Um, but I do have to ask before you go, are there programs that help subsidize some of these costs? You know, because when we started, um, I told Lagos that um, the paper you co-wrote talks about how expensive um, substance uh, use disorder treatments are. So short answer, you know, are there programs? programs uh, that people can tap into um to the best of my knowledge Mm -hmm. no and unfortunately addiction is not covered in insurance health insurance Mm. so so no so there's a policy gap there that needs there is a policy gap Okay. Indeed. The next time we have her back, we'll talk about what the government could do uh, mm-hmm. as far as that policy gap is concerned. But Chinenge, you've been such a, a pleasurable guest. Thank, Thank you so you much. Thank you for having me. And uh, Lagos, stick around because from uh, 6.15, we're going to go to our newsroom for some of the biggest stories that broke last week. Don't miss it. Ufoma and Agogo will be here uh, bringing you some of those big stories. I am Sandra Ezekwesili, S. Ezekwesili on social media. Uh, I will be back tomorrow with with the big three, also bringing you um, uh, the big hard fact where we take a look at the biggest political stories in the country. Those were your hard facts, Lagos. Good night. Info. 99.3 Nigeria Info. Let's talk. 99.3 Nigeria Info. We are more than just radio. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at Nigeria Info FM. Check us out on Facebook at Nigeria Info 99.3. Follow us on Twitter at Nigeria Info FM and on Instagram at Nigeria Info FM Lagos for live updates as it happens. 99.3 Nigeria Info.